Hello and welcome to a, another video. So in this one I thought we'd stick with the Harvard theme, stick with the CS50P. Um, so we're going to do problem set one this time. So we did problem set zero last week and this week we're going to actually do problem set one. So this is what problem set one is. It is basically, well there's a few, let's go back a step. So there, I think it's five tasks this time, one, two, three, four, five tasks this time. So we'll start with the top and we will work down slowly. So we're in deep thought. So basically deep thought is where you have to return the answer of 42. So you ask a question of what is the answer to, what is the answer to the great question of life, the universe and everything and you expect the answer to be 42. So let's have a go. So first of all we need some user input. Uh, and we need... Um, let's do a string this time uh, and then we'll do the question actually can I just copy this uh, do, 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 do. I don't think I can just copy it from anywhere can I? I think I've got to type it okay oh wait okay okay we'll just type it what is the answer to the Great question of life. I'm just getting that from here when it comes back up. Uh, the universe and everything. Uh, and then we'll close off there. Perfect. So that should appear. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to replace. So I'm thinking about this line here. So we know that the user wants to be 42, but what if the user enters that little hyphen or enters a space? We want to get rid of that. So let's just do text equals user input uh, dot replace. And we're going to replace the hyphen like that. And we're going to just replace it with nothing. No, let's replace it with a space like that. And then I want it to lowercase, so I don't really want to have to deal with um, the, uh, can't remember my words, capitalisation, that's the word. So we're going to put top lower and then we're going to strip it so we get rid of any full stops or anything like that. But what we've got to work on now is this section here. So if the, the number 42 is answered, then yes is going to appear. But if the 42 is written like that, then yes, is still going to appear. But what if 42 is still going to appear? But what if it doesn't get there? So the output, if 42 isn't answered, is no. So this is going to be a big if statement. So if text is equal to 42. So remember, because we've put it in a string, we have to, we've asked for the input to be in a string. We have to put the answering speech marks. So then we want to print yes, because they got it right. We'll accept that. But if elif uh, text equals 42, again, we're going to accept that. So we're going to print yes, like that. And then we'll do one more. Uh, no, we're good with that. And then we'll do else. And I'm going to do print. No. Why not? Okay. I think I tried to run it. I didn't mean to run it. Can I control and see that? Oh. Oh dear. Can I, uh... There we go. I don't know why I was on a different terminal. So let's do Python deep dot py. Um, else, of course, it's not my video without spelling stick. Let's try again. Uh, print, because it's not in line. Try again. There we go. 
but it doesn't actually take in anything does it so because i always forget my input there i always forget that and then i need a double one on the end there we go let's try again what is the answer to let's do 42 okay let's try 42 ah so the strip isn't happening okay okay let's try again so what i'm going to do this time is i'm going to copy it from here 42 was that one wasn't it yeah okay and let's try with capitals. I think I spelled 42 wrong. Yeah, perfect. And if we put something random, uh, 6, then the answer is no. Now, I'm still going to do the check just to make sure. So that'll take a second. So we do the check just to make sure that it, it would count. Usually takes about a minute. Well, let's do it. Let's have a look at the next activity. Yeah, a second. Waiting for result. We're getting there some closer there we go so all of those was correct so we actually in fact solved the thought so now let's have a look at this one so this one is called the home federal savings bank okay so uh in this one we need to implement a program that prompts the user for a greeting if the greeting move starts with hello output zero, if the greeting starts with H but not hello output 20, otherwise output 100. Ignore any leading white space in the user's greeting. Okay, so step one then, we need to get some user input. So let's do greeting equals input, enter a greeting. Uh, okay, probably because I'm... Uh, we go let's lower this this is from the last one we've just done like that and then output because we need all of the we need to ignore any white spaces we're going to remove all of the white spaces by using strip so we're going to go output equals greeting dot lower dot strip so we're getting rid of all the white spaces and we are getting rid of all of the capital letters now we're going to do an if statement that because we want to check if the value that's entered um is hello so we go if output is equal to actually no so we could do is equal to hello like that and if that's the case we could print um dollars zero like that or we could use this little input inbuilt function that Python's got called starts with. So we can get rid of that and we can put dot starts with like that. And then put this in um, speech marks. And then we can do the same for the H. So we can copy this. I'll put L if. Instead of having a low this time, we could have H, and then that becomes $20. And, and then otherwise, so anything else, the output will be zero. So then we can just put else, print 100, there we go, $100, and I forgot my speech marks. Okay, so let's try that one. So what are the... So let's do CD and then CD bank and then Python bank .py. Enter a greeting. Let's start with hello. So this should 
output nothing perfect uh, just a little bit of um what's the word customization maybe let's do it again uh let's do hey because that should output 20 perfect what about good morning 100 perfect so let's just check it and make sure we've covered everything that will take a second so these this set of problems is all to do with conditionals so if statements give it a second perfect so we've actually got that one fully correct so let's have a look at the next one so file extensions okay okay then so i've created my new section and i've just uh, left everything the same so now we've got to do file extensions so in a file called extensions.py implement a program that prompts the user for the name of the file and outputs that file's media type if the file's name end, if the file name ends, hang on a second, let me get that right. So out the files media type. If the file name ends, okay, is it just me that's not actually understanding that? Um, in a file called extensions.py, implement a program that prompts a user for the name of a file and output that file's media type. If the file's name ends, case insensitively in any other suffixes. Or any of these suffixes wow i just need to finish the rest of the sentence wow okay so we've got gifts i don't want to use the hint just yet i'm going to just close my eyes and show you the hint so you can see it there but i don't really want to use it i want to try without it so this is what we end up doing so you end up the cat.gif and it outputs an image and a gif okay so first things first then we need a file name or a file type so let's do file name name equals uh, input like that and then we need to get rid of any uh, capitalization and then we also need to get rid of any white spaces so let's do output equals file name dot lower dot strip like that and then where we can do ends with so like we did starts with previously using the python built-in function we can actually do ends with so we can do if output um dot ends with gif then if it ends in gif we want it to print um print image slash gif like that and we can copy that and do l if ends with what's the next one jpg it's going to be an image and then we're going to end it with okay. i'll just do jpg for that one because there's another one underneath for jpeg i'm going to copy ends in jpeg then it's going to be an image and a jpeg uh, if it ends with a png i'm just going to get rid of that space if it ends in png png then again it's going to be an image slash png and then uh, output ends in uh, pdf now pdf is probably going to be text so i could be applicate what does it say on here let's see what pdf says on here if py jpeg cat.jpg uh cat okay let me show you um oh there application pdf let's copy that 
and we'll place that in there. And then what we got after that? So after PDF, it's text. So one thing I have thought about on here, these should all be dots, shouldn't they? Um, otherwise, P. And then I think is it one more dot zip. And that is application dot zip. Now I'm not 100% sure about the text. What does it say about the text? I don't think text is that. Let's test it and see. Um, let's go straight to this because I'm not 100% sure if that application text is correct and I want to be I want it to tell me whether or not it is it's going to verify for me If it isn't, we'll get a red, but that's fine because it gives us a hint to fix it. Okay, so input a plain text. Right, let's say uh, go to this and it will show us. Uh, 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 okay, right, so we can fix that one straight away. So, what does it say? Expected image, not image JPG. Okay. I'll have a look at that one. That's happy. Perhaps it wants text plain. Right, okay. So we'll copy that. And we'll paste that in on the text. And then I think I've done zip wrong. That'll be one of them. Application user. Oh, okay. So, so we need an else then. Okay. Let's copy. Copy that. And we'll do else print. Okay. Right. Let's try it again. I'll close that one down so we don't get confused. Yeah. Right, so I think image JPEG. Okay. We just Uh, let's just copy it straight from here maybe that's right to me and then what was the last one see output of zipper.jpg with Another extension name yields output of image for slash jpg. Ah, okay. All right. Uh, 
let's just try doing this. So copying it and then pasting it. So Ah, I get it, I get it. Right, so it wants JPEG for both of them. So where is GPG? It actually wants JPEG. Okay, let's let's test that. Give it a minute. There we go. It wanted JPEG on both of them. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. So we've done file extensions. We're on Math Interpreter now. Okay. Okay then. So, so Python already supports Math. Okay. For instance, in a file called Interpret, implement a program that prompts a user for an arithmetic expression and then calculation and outputs. The result is a floating point value formatted to one decimal place. Assume that the user's input will be formatted as x, y, z with one space between x and y and one space between y and z, wherein x is an integer, y is plus minus, multiply or divide, and z is an integer. Okay then, so first things first, we need an expression. Expression equals input expression. And then again, we need to strip it and get rid of all that lower. So we'll do output equals expression dot lower dot strip. And then I want to split my x, y, and z. So if I want to, so basically my x is going to be a floating point. My y is going to be a floating point, but my z Oh, sorry, my x and z are going to be floating points, but my y is going to be a expression or arithmetic or a... I can't remember the word for it. Is it the natural word for it? Come on, brain. It's been a long year. Blooming heck. Logical expression? Anyway, you're going to be screaming up the screen for this, but anyway. So I want to split it so my x and my, and my z are floats, but my y is an arithmetic operation. That's the word I needed. Blooming neck. Okay, so let's do x, y, z equals text. Now let's do output. It makes it easier. Dot split. And we want to split like that. And then we're going to do x as a floating point. And we're going to do z as a floating point. And then y is going to become our arithmetic option. So we're going to say if y is equal to plus, then I want you to do result equals um, x plus z. And then we're going to print result. And then we're just going to copy that. Elif y is equal to... Uh, subtract, it's going to change that to that and we'll print result elif equals to uh, divide and then we're going to do elif uh, multiply and it'll be equal multiply like that um, Yeah, that's all fine. And then else... Now, is there anything for else? I'm just looking to see if it has a specific expression for else. Uh, 
Nope, so let's just put... Oops. Like that. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's test it. Uh, three divided by seven. Okay. Not enough values to unpack. Oh, is it because I didn't press space? Three. Yeah, it's because you need spaces in between. Okay, let's do the check thing. And test it. So just take a minute. Loading. I'm just looking through as it checks to see if I can spot any obvious mistakes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that one's correct. Let's have a look at the next one. So I think this is the last one. Meal time. Okay, so in meal.py, implement a program that prompts a user for a time and outputs whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. If it's not time for a meal, don't output anything at all. Assume that a user's input will be formatted in 24 hour clock. Okay, so it's given us a structure this time, so I'm going to copy that straight in. Okay, it still gives a hint. I'm going to look away now. Okay, and I'm going to close it back up. There we go, because I don't really want to look at the hint. Um, so we've got a main. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is take in a time. So what time is it? So that's going to go in here. Um, let's do time equals input. Is it like that? And then... We need to convert the time, that's the next thing, to 24 hours. So, this will be in this section. So we need to split it by hours and minutes. So it'll be hours, uh, minutes, because hours comes before minutes, equals time dot split. And normally we split at the semicolon, like that. And then hours could become a float. So how do we work out hours now? So we need to return it all in hours. So if I do hours equals float hours, and then we could do minutes. Like that, and then divide it all by 60. Would that work? I guess we'll test it. And then we need to do the if stuff. So we've done that bit. We need to check if it's for the lunch meals. So if, actually no, we need to convert time. So let's do check equals convert, which is this bit here. So we need to actually link these two uh, methods together so then we can go if check is crocodile always eats a bigger number smaller than or equal to 7.0 and check is so basically we want that one hour slot uh bigger than or equal to 8.0 oh. Then we're going to print. Do we want capitals? Not really. Do we have breakfast time? No. But we're, eh. Breakfast time like that. And then we can copy that. And do elif g 
check is between so what's my next one 12 and 1 between 12 and it's 24 hour clock in it so it'll become 1300 and this is lunchtime and then one more and this one's between 1800 and 1900 comes uh, do, do, do. Yeah. okay i think i need to return hours there as well let's test it let's go straight for the check Missing the required files. Oh, okay. Right again. okay we're done right do we have any more problems nope that's it so that is problem set one so that is technically the second week um of cs50 python but um let me know if you like these because I, I don't mind keep doing them i actually quite enjoy them so python set three or problem set three if i make this a little bit bigger is loops so we could have a look at the loops and uh, maybe see what happens there. I'll probably set two even. But yeah, but that's it for now. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it and happy coding.